All right, well, thanks everybody for coming. So this is my talk on parallel query in PostgreSQL. Um, they put this on the hacking track, maybe because it's still an upcoming feature. Um, I've actually been giving talks about parallel query for about three years now. Um, but now it's not just something that I hope will happen someday. It's actually got committed code, and it, it works, at least for some things. Um, and so I'm not really thinking of this as an internals talk. I'm really intending uh, to talk more about how this feature looks from a user perspective, and I hope that you'll um, find that interesting. Um, I do also want to say uh, uh, that it's fine if you want to raise your hand and ask a question during the talk. Um, I don't have a tremendous number of slides, so hopefully we'll have enough time to take a few questions uh, during the course of the talk. I'll try to keep my head moving back and forth so that I see your hand go up, but uh, shout out if I, if I don't notice you. Um, so th the first question that you might have, although maybe not, is uh, what is parallel query? Um, and the answer to that is that parallel query is a feature that enables us to speed up queries by using multiple CPUs. So in every current version of PostgreSQL that's been released, queries are always executed by a single process. We spin up a process when you connect to the database server, um, and that remains, that process sticks around for the entire lifetime of your connection, and then it goes away when you disconnect uh, from the server. And that process, therefore, is executing all your queries. It does all the work, and that's it. Um, and sometimes that's okay. In fact, judging by the amount of PostgreSQL, of success that PostgreSQL has had from the beginning up until now, it's actually pretty often okay, right? But sometimes it's not okay. Um, and so sometimes we'd like to speed things up by using uh, worker processes. Um, and uh, it's pretty easy to do this um, with PostgreSQL 9.6 development version. Um, all you really have to do is set the max parallel degree setting to a value greater than zero. Um, the value that you set is the number of worker processes that you'd like to use at the most uh, to speed up some parallel operation, and I've generally found that you don't get a lot of benefit from, be going, from going beyond four. Um, depending on your situation, you might also need to adjust max worker processes, which is a setting we've had around for a while. Um, the default is eight. Um, but if you're going to run a whole bunch of parallel queries at, at the same time, then you might need to raise that. Um, parallel query is not always going to be useful. Uh, it's not intended to always be useful. Um, in particular, uh, you know, dividing up the work between multiple CPUs really only makes sense when the amount of work is substantial. If your query is going to run in a few milliseconds anyway, there's really no point in trying to figure out how to get an even split of that work across multiple CPUs. Um, I'm really pretty much only interested in speeding up queries that run for at least a few hundred milliseconds uh, at this point, or certainly anything that takes seconds or tens of seconds or hundreds of seconds. We'd like to be able to speed those things up. Um, maybe eventually we can accelerate queries that run in tens of milliseconds. I think single digits of milliseconds, there's really never any point in doing this. Um, so it's for long queries. Um, this is also not for systems where you have more concurrent queries than you have CPUs. So if you have more queries running at the same time than you have CPUs, then adding additional processes to that mix is just going to make the contention on the system worse. You're already forcing uh, queries to share a CPU, and the operating system has to switch back and forth between the different processes that are running, and now you're going to start up some more processes, and everything is just probably going to just get worse. Um, it's also not going to help with qu for queries that are I.O. bound. Um, I do know that a lot of people are very excited about parallel query as a feature. Uh, I certainly am. Um, but it does not make your disk spin any faster. So if that is the thing that is keeping your uh, queries from running quicker. Uh, this feature will not help you, and probably most other features won't help you either. Um, and of course, there are a bunch of implementation restrictions on parallel query. In fact, there's a shockingly long list of things that parallel query can't handle, which I'll be talking about later uh, in the talk. It's actually kind of depressing if you think too hard about all of the things that we don't support yet, so I try not to Try not to do that. Um, so here's an example of a query that actually parallelizes rather well. Um, this is uh, an example of uh, 
query 12 from the TPCH benchmark. Um, and as you can see, this is a pretty complicated query. It's a join between two tables. There's a very complicated uh, where clause. Uh, and then there's also a group by clause and some aggregation going on. Uh, there's an order by, there's a limit. Um, and at the very top, you know, in, in the select clause at the top, you can see that we're doing a, a, a couple of sums. And they're not just the sum of an individual column, but they're actually um, the sum of a fairly complicated expression. Um, and so you might say, oh gosh, Robert said there were all of these limitations of parallel query. Certainly something in, in this big complicated query is going to run afoul of one of those restrictions, but it turns out it doesn't, um, which I, I'm pretty happy about. Um, so here's the plan that we get. I simplified this a lot so that it would fit on the slide and not contain a lot of extraneous information that you don't care about. Um, so this is the plan that gets chosen for this query with uh, max parallel degree set to four. Um, we launch four workers, and those workers begin the parallel sequential scan, which is shown on the second line from the bottom of this explain analyze output. And the difference between a parallel sequential scan and a regular sequential scan is that in a parallel sequential scan, all of the cooperating processes that are performing that scan are, are doing one scan, not one scan per worker, but one scan in total. So any given row of the table is going to be returned to exactly one worker. If you did a regular sequential scan and you did copies of it in four or five or however many workers you had, you would get every tuple in the table in every worker. But this parallel sequential scan has special magic sprinkled on it so that each tuple comes back to exactly one worker. So each worker gets from the parallel sequential scan a subset of the tuples in the table, and it then performs the nested loop join on just the tuples that it gets. And there are about 60, an average of about 62,000 rows um, per process that executes this in this example. Um, and uh, it turns out that, th that all of those um, rows have a join partner in the other table to which we're joining, because there's a foreign key or something like that. Um, so after the performing the nested loop join, we still have about 62,000 rows per process. Now at that point, we perform a partial aggregate. The sums that were listed on the previous slide get performed on a worker-by-worker -worker basis in this partial hash aggregate. So this partial hash aggregate is uh, is an entirely local operation. Each worker is separately performing the sum, which means that there could be some duplicated groups, right? There's a group by in the previous, uh, in, the, in the query text, it's on um, L underscore ship mode. So um, sometimes you may have a situation where a particular ship mode uh, shows up in more than one worker. And so then each worker will compute a sum of the records that it saw. But that's not the final answer that we can give to the user. We still have to combine those groups across workers. And that's what's going to happen in the finalized aggregate state. Uh, so what happens first is this gather node. The gather node is what launched all the workers. It also gathers the results from all the workers. So in this case, it pulls back the six rows across, across all of the processes that executed the partial hash aggregate, we got a total of six rows. Um, it sorts them, and then it performs a group aggregate, um, which actually would produce two rows, but there's a limit one on the query, so it only outputs one of those rows, uh, and then it's done. So the reason why this query parallelizes very well is because it needs to look through a lot of data, hundreds of thousands of rows, uh, but it actually only needs to return a very small amount of data from the workers to the leader. There's only a total of six rows that get sent back to the leader. Um, and then the leader does a little bit of finish up work, which is not parallel, but it doesn't matter because there isn't very much of it. It returns the rows to the users, and we're done. Yay, woohoo. Yeah. How do you know how to create the uh, I don't remember the exact row counts here. One thing that is kind of sucks about the explain analyze output is that um, the, the four workers are all performing the part of the plan that's beneath the gather. The leader is also 
performing the part of the plan that's beneath the gather, but only when there's no data available to be read from a worker. So you get an asymmetric distribution of work where the leader is getting a much smaller number of rows than the other four workers are getting, and then you just average all of those numbers and you get a result that is a little bit surprising. So I think, I think if we just multiply that average by 562,000 rows, so I think it might be 310,000 rows, but I'd have to check the, the data set. It's something, something like that. Uh, but actually what will have happened is the workers will have gotten more than 62,000 rows and the leader will have gotten much less because it's busy doing all of those other steps. Any other questions on this? One other thing to note here is that most of the time gets spent on the parallel portion of the plan. Um, the overall pl query takes 6.9 seconds to execute, and almost all of that is in that parallel sequential scan and, and the nested loop that's on top of it. So, uh, you know, the key to actually getting a good speed up from parallelism is that you need to parallelize as much of the work as possible. And here we basically parallelized all of it. I mean, I didn't show it down to the last millisecond here, but there was, there were few enough milliseconds of work above the gather that it's 6.9 seconds for the gather and 6.9 seconds for the entire query. Yeah. No, you're <laughs> wrong. Because the gather doesn't run to completion before the upper nodes start running. Okay. As soon as the gather starts producing tuples, whatever is on top of that is going to do its thing. Now, in this particular case, yeah, that might be possible because the thing that's on top of the gather is a sort, and the sort can't really do all of that much until it has, can't really start outputting rows until it has all the input rows. But in general, that's not true. There's lots of query plans where the gather doesn't have something like a sort above it, and you know the rows are going to start getting consumed as they get produced. Yeah, I, mean, I was just thinking about possible replanning during the process, but uh... okay. So drag us off into a discussion of a completely unrelated feature. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the, the par you're saying how does the parallel sequential scan divide up the block by block? So each worker claims a block, um, and then it gets all the rows in that block. When it's done whatever it needs to do with every row in the block, it moves on to the next, next block that hasn't been claimed yet. Do you do bitmap scan um, I'll get to that. Okay, okay so... Uh, what can we actually do in PostgreSQL 9.6? I'm sure that's a question a lot of people have. There have been a lot of commits. Did you follow all those commits? I know I did. But you may have followed them less carefully than I did for one reason or another. Um, so scans, joins, and aggregates can be done in parallel in 9.6, subject to a long, long, long list of restrictions. Um, for aggregates, uh, the, 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 the basic thing is that it needs to be a kind of a boring old style aggregate, like when you learned how to write SQL in the 80s, ordered set aggregates like rank, uh, window aggregates where you say average blah over partition by blah. Yeah, those don't work with this. Maybe they will someday, but today they don't. Okay, so it needs to be a plain old aggregate. And the aggregate that you're using actually needs some specific core support or not core support, but it needs some specific support functions to allow parallel aggregation to work because it needs to be able to pass intermediate state data between the worker and the leader. Um, and we have updated, David Rowley and Hari Babu Komi updated most of the really interesting core aggregates that can theoretically support parallel aggregate to actually do so. Of course, if you define your own aggregate functions, then you're gonna have to do the work uh, for those or if you 
are installing an extension, and that extension hasn't been updated to support parallel aggregation, but it defines aggregates, then you know, you're going to have issues with that. Um, but most of the things that you would expect to work doesn't. Uh, we don't, for example, have parallel aggregate support for XML ag, which is a built-in aggregate that glues XML blobs together. So that aggregation would all happen in the leader, uh, which probably doesn't really matter because in that case, aggregating doesn't actually change the amount of data that needs to be shuffled between processes. So it probably wouldn't help that much anyway. Did you have a question? Yeah. Right, so, so the aggregates, when I say that things don't work, I mean that they will be done after the parallel stage. They'll be, the aggregate will be totally above the gathered node. So uh, you'll still be able to aggregate and you'll still be able to use parallel query, but you won't be able to perform the aggregate itself uh, in parallel. So you may parallelize part of the query, but you won't be able to parallelize the aggregate in the cases where that's not supported. Um, in terms of joins, they need to be either nested loops or hash joins, not merged joins. And that's a little weird when you first hear it, but if you think about it, you'll kind of see why it makes sense. Um, you can think of the parallel sequential scan in this plan as partitioning the data. So each worker gets part of the data from one side, and then it does something for each road that it gets. It goes out and does an index probe, or it goes out and probes a hash table. So, so it gets some of the rows over here, and then it does whatever it needs to do per row. Merge join doesn't really work that way, right? Merge join needs a stream of all of the rows from both sides, and there might be some clever tricks that we could play to make this work in some cases involving merge joins, but in general, it would be very easy to create lots of queries that did a lot of duplicate work and were really slow uh, if we did this in a naive way. So obviously, people who are building systems that do uh, joins and aggregates on huge amounts of data um, will uh, eventually want us to be able to do um, merge joins here in parallel, and there are more complicated algorithms that uh, involve primitives that we don't have in PostgreSQL yet that you can use in order to sort of transform a merge join into some other kind of thing that you can parallelize, um, but we are not going to have that in 9.6. Probably not 9.7 either. Um, and sort of one of the restrictions I think is going to be somewhat onerous for people, uh, and hopefully will get lifted, is that the scan on the driving table must be a sequential scan. It cannot use an index. It cannot be a bitmap index scan. This is sad. So what do I mean by the driving table? Well, if you look at the portion of the query that involves joins, which in this case, there's only one join. There's a nested loop, right? Basically, the first table that is mentioned, that's the driving table. You're going to read rows from that table, and then that's going to trigger some series of joins that happen after that. The scan on the driving table in 9.6 must be a sequential scan, not some other kind of scan. That is sad. Um, here are some things that will cause your parallel query to not be a parallel query. If your query does these, if your query is run in any of these situations, it will not pick a parallel plan. Uh, it will, it will not use parallel query. So, uh, write queries, um, cannot use parallel query currently. Uh, inserts, updates, deletes, functions that call next val on a sequence. If you're changing the database state in any way, you're not eligible for parallel query. Must be at least this read only to apply. Um, yeah? Nope. No create table as either. Sorry. Um, you cannot suspend the execution of the query to do something else in the middle. So if you're using a cursor to scan the query output, no parallel query. If you're using a PLP JSQL for a loop, iterating over the results of a query, no parallel query. I'm sorry. <laughs> Doesn't work. Um, the serializable isolation level does not support parallel query. If you set your transaction le isolation level to serializable, you will not get any parallel queries. I am sorry for that, too. Um, We, 
we don't have a, uh, an exception for deferred serializable, which we probably should do that. Um, I didn't think of that. Um, and uh, you also can't call functions in your query which are parallel unsafe, and parallel unsafe is the default. So we've actually gone through and marked most of the stuff that is in the system catalogs with the default install as parallel safe. There are some parallel unsafe things in there which we have left marked parallel unsafe, but in terms of the built-in stuff, we've most, mostly marked that parallel safe where it is, but if you're creating your own functions or installing extensions, um, then you may need to apply these markings in the situations where they apply. Now you might be saying, well, what if my function writes to the database and I mark it parallel safe anyway? <laughs> well, if you manage to convince the query planner to choose a parallel plan in that case, you will get an error. And it will say, yeah, you can't modify the database when you're doing a parallel query. So in that case, that's your fault. You mislabeled that function as being parallel safe when in fact it isn't, and uh, you therefore got a plan that did not actually run. Yes, you can ask a quick question. How does this work on partitioned tables? Uh, how does this work on partitioned tables? So um, it. So uh, there are a lot of complicated transformations of query trees that we could do that would produce speed ups in both parallel and non-parallel cases, and we don't do all of the transformations that are possible there. Um, the basic form of scanning a partition table works fine, but it isn't particularly any more intelligent in the parallel case right now than it would be in the non-parallel case. You can get an append with a series of parallel sequential scan nodes under it and parallel sequential scan them all. But you can't, for example, have index, a, a series of index scans under there because the driving table has to be a parallel sequential scan. Um, so it kind of works for basic cases, but there's a lot more intelligence that's needed there. And, and that kind of relates back to some of the stuff about supporting merge joins. Because if you're joining two equipartition tables, instead of having one merge join of the append of, of each relation, you could transform that into a bunch of little merge joins, and then you could schedule those out to the workers, and lots of cool things would happen automatically. But uh, yeah, we can't do that yet. Yeah. Foreign data wrappers. Uh, foreign data wrappers are on a per foreign data wrapper basis. Um, so uh, for example, file FDW, so Postgres FDW supports nothing. You can't scan it in a parallel worker at all because the leader holds the connection and that has transaction state associated with it so you're out of luck. Um, file FDW uh, does not support a parallel scan, but it can be, so it can't be the driving table for a parallel query, but it could be referenced elsewhere in the parallel query as a table being joined to because it's safe for that. No. Yeah, okay. No. Uh, yeah. That's actually kind of getting off again into a different set of features, which I'm actually hoping to have Enterprise DB contribute to the community for the next release. But that's a really big digression. Um, so let me talk about restricted operations. So there's a difference between forbidden or unsafe and restricted. And the difference is if something is unsafe, then the presence of that thing anywhere in the query means that you get no parallelism at all in that query. The presence of a restricted operation means that that particular part of the query cannot be parallelized, but you may still be able to run other parts of the query in parallel. So this is a list of most of the significant restricted operations. Um, some of these are going to be really sad for some people, so if you're an easily upset, emotional kind of person, uh, make sure you're sitting down when you read this list. Um, only the leader can read temporary tables. Only the leader can scan common table expressions. Only the leader can scan a foreign table unless the foreign data wrapper has been updated to certify that it is safe to scan within a worker. Uh, only the leader may scan plan nodes with an init plan or a subplan. 
Only the leader may call a scan a subquery scan. Only the leader may call functions marked parallel restricted. That's a long list of things that would be really nice to fix. So if you're sitting in the audience and you're a PostgreSQL hacker, you should be asking yourself, which of these restrictions am I going to help fix? Because really, that's your job, right? Yeah, your job is to make my features better. Absolutely. So uh, yeah, obviously, we hope some of these restrictions are going to get lifted in future releases. But right now, there's a long list of things where that particular part of the query is not going to participate in parallelism. So given all of those restrictions, you might be asking yourself, does this thing really do anything that I care about? Is it any good? And I think that's a good question. So I did a little bit of testing. Uh, Tomas Vondra did a, 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 some directions a few years ago explaining how to run uh, the TPCH benchmark uh, on, uh, on PostgreSQL. Uh, it's about four years old now, I guess, but his directions are easy to follow and uh, they work. So I did it. Um, and it, uh, TPCH queries involve 22 long running queries that can require seconds or even minutes to execute. Um, I, we have a community uh, piece of hardware. It's an IBM Power 7 box um, with, a lot of, uh, with a lot of CPUs, which is why it's called Hydra. Get it? The CPUs are like heads. It, it has a terrible disk subsystem. But, uh, but IBM uh, was very nice to give us this box. And uh, so uh, I, I used that system to test this. I used uh, the very latest version of PostgreSQL 9.6 Devel, and I tested it with max parallel degree 0, i.e. no parallel query, and with max parallel degree 4, uh, about as much parallel query as we can usually uh, manage right now. Um, and I used a, 10, a database sizing with uh, 10 gigabytes of input data. Uh, the database size is 22 gigs. That's about 14 gigs of table data and about 8 gigs of indexes. Um, as is normal, you do have some increase in size when you go from a, a text format, which is very compact, into something that the database can actually handle. Um, and I, I made basically no attempt to optimize this, as will become clear as I go through the next couple of slides. But this is like pretty much straight out of the box. I think I increased shared buffers. That was about it. OK, so 17 of the 22 queries switched to using parallel query in some form. The other five query plans, as you would hope, did not change. Um, and uh, of the 17 queries that used parallelism, 15 of those got faster. One of them didn't change. Oops. And one of them got slower. Oops. Um, so here's the results for queries 1 through 10. Um, so Query 1 went from 229 seconds to 45 seconds. We used five processes instead of one, the leader and four workers, and it got five times faster. Woohoo! Uh, the other ones, we had varying degrees of speed up. Um, the lowest one was query 9, uh, which, which only sped up by a factor of 1.3. Um, query 2, you'll notice, is not listed here. That was one of the ones where the query plan didn't change. Yeah. Yeah. Because you have the leader and four workers. So you're going from one process to five processes. Well, so this slide says one of two, Stephen. Yeah. I don't remember what data type we used. Um, so here's the second set of results. Not quite as good. Um, actually, query 12 did great, uh, almost five times faster. Um, queries 15, 13 and 14, it got no plan change. Queries 15 and 16, not so great, right? I mean, a little bit of speed up, but considering how many processes we're throwing at that, you might have hoped for a little more. Uh, query 17 got more than twice as fast. That's pretty good. Um, query 18 planned didn't change. Query 19 went from two seconds to one second, but these times are only accurate to the nearest second, so uh, I'm not sure how meaningful that is. Um, query 20 uh, used parallelism, but 
it actually only used a tiny little bit of parallelism in one part of the plan, so it didn't really speed anything up. Um, query 21 got slower. I'll go into more detail about what happened there and how we can improve on that. Um, and query 22 got a little bit, a little bit faster. I did. I did not measure how much CP time was spent. Greg. So I don't remember exactly what the situation was for query 16. I'd have to go back and look at my explain analyze output. Um, for query 20, you got this big plan tree, and down in one tiny little corner that took 100 milliseconds to execute, it threw a little bit of parallelism in. So it couldn't really save more than 100 milliseconds because that's as much of the plan as it parallelized. Um, I'm gonna, I don't have time to go through all 22 queries one at a time uh, in, this, in this presentation. I am going to talk a little bit about query 21 um, in particular, and then I'm also going to sort of cover, uh, I have a slide where I sort of went through and analyzed what went wrong uh, with both the queries where we got a speed up, why didn't we get more, and the queries where we didn't get a speed up, what happened there. So I do have a slide on that later on. These are just the, the raw numbers. Um, so the takeaway here is that you know, linear scaling with four workers, we got five processes instead of one, so we should get a 5x speed up if everything is perfect. Uh, uh, only one of the 22 queries we got got that, and only three queries had a speed up of 4x or greater. Um, so, you know, in some sense, you could say this is a bad story, right? Each of the 17 queries that used parallelism consumed perhaps as much as five times the resources to produce a speed up that was sometimes a lot less than 5x. Um, on the other hand, uh, if you have extra CPU cores that are going to sit idle, using them to get some speed up is better than not using them for anything at all. Much better than not using them for anything at all. Um, and 11 out, of these 17, 11 out of the 17 queries where we were able to use um, parallelism, 11 out of the 22 queries in total, were more than twice as fast, um, which I think is really awesome. Um, so yeah, that's the... The performance results. So, so what's up with that regression? Um, well, when parallel query does a hash join, each backend currently has to construct its own copy of the hash table, um, which has the advantage of being simple to implement, but also being expensive. Uh, it uses n copies of the memory and n times the CPU, and it might also induce lock or I/O contention, which could be quite bad. Um, for query 21. We had to build a hash table on the largest table in the database, which is about nine and a half gigabytes in size in this case. Uh, and we had work mem set to the default of four megabytes, because like I said, I really didn't tune this before I ran the test. Um, so it did a hash join with 1,024 batches, which meant you had five workers that were reading and writing batch files at top speed and doing 1,024 batches. Um, which, you know, obviously the real solution to this is to be able to have everybody build into a shared hash table. Um, the other real solution to this is set work mem to more than four megabytes um, when you're trying to join multi-gigabyte tables. Um, you know, fixing one of those things, if I, if I raise work mem up to one gigabyte, um, then parallel query wins, but only by 6%. Um, so we're not really going to be able to do well on queries like this. Um, until we have uh, the ability to, to build a shared hash table, which is being worked on by Thomas Monroe. Um, so yeah, here's the, here's the query plan. The big problem is that line item, as I say, is the largest table in the database, and we've got everybody reconstructing the hash table. Bummer. Um, here's what the plan might look like. Um, if, if we were able to do this, we could actually uh, have a parallel sequential scan of that big table. So each backend would get a subset of the rows in the table, and each backend would insert the rows that it got from that table into this shared hash table, and then everybody could probe the shared hash table, and probably that would be a lot better. Um, but we'll have to finish implementing it before we can tell you how much better it is. So questions on this point? 
OK. Um, so here's a summary of kind of like what seemed to be generally going wrong. Um, there were three queries where the ideal join strategy was a merge join, and we just couldn't do that in parallel. Um, and I think all of those are queries where the plan didn't change, I think. Um, then we had five queries where a pas parallel hash table build looked like it would have helped to some degree. Um, I think the speed ups there are likely to be pretty dramatic um, if we get that working. Um, there were a lot of places where it would have been useful to have the driving table scan be a parallel bitmap index scan rather than a parallel sequential scan. Uh, I found uh, seven examples of that. Um, so what we basically did in those cases is we just uh, made it faster by using raw power, right? Forget these indexes to throw to skip data that we don't care about. Just boom, hit it with enough CPUs, and it doesn't matter if we have to scan the entire table. Uh, obviously, that's not like what you'd like to be doing, um, which I think makes it all the more impressive that we got better than 2x speedups on some of these queries despite having to do that kind of unfortunate thing. Um, but, but clearly, if we could avoid doing that, um, we, would, we would win more on those queries. Um, there were four queries in this test set where the, the fact that we really are very stupid about subqueries and pretty much just give up uh, on parallelism when subqueries are involved uh, hurt us in one way or another. Uh, there was one query where we wasted a lot of time sorting the same data twice. So we sorted the data in the workers so that we could do a partial aggregate step there. Um, there were a lot of rows that were output by that partial aggregation because there were many groups. Um, and then the leader got all of those, and the gather node totally destroys the sort ordering. Um, so we had to resort all of that data a second time so that we could do the, the final aggregation stage. Um, a colleague of mine is working, uh, Rushab is working on uh, a, a fix for this kind of situation where we can merge sorted streams from the individual workers back together into a single uh, sorted stream. We've already got merge append. This would be gather merge, um, and that would, that would be very good for query number 17 in this set. Um, there were some queries here where I was like, huh, I wonder why you didn't parallelize more of this plan, and I haven't had time to go through and figure out the answer to that question yet. Um, so there may be bugs, or there may be costing problems, or maybe the plan it actually chose is ideal for some reason that I don't understand yet, but there were like some queries that needed more um, more uh, work, and, and then there were three queries where, as far as I could tell, the plan that it picked was as good as any plan that I could think of, and so I don't see how it's going to get better. Um, and you may notice that between the parallel hash table build and the parallel bitmap index scan, there's some overlap. There were several queries that looked like they could benefit from both of those things, so uh, a couple queries are mentioned more than once on here. Uh, so Andres is asking if I've designed how we want to do parallel bitmap scans. Um, not in detail. I mean, I think there are a couple of approaches. Um, one is the first process that gets there could build the bitmap in shared memory, and then everybody else could take turns pulling data from that. Uh, you could also try to parallelize building the bitmap. I'm not really sure how that's going to work, though, because walking through indexes is kind of an inherently serial operation. It probably does make sense to have the ability to do multiple processes doing a parallel walk through an index so that that can be the driving table for a scan because there might, have, might, might be a large amount of per-tuple work that can be done afterward. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I don't know exactly where that's going to land yet. But there are several degrees of that that you could, that you could try to do. Yes, David. Uh, Right, so that's another, that's another opportunity for parallelism is you could, if you're doing a bitmap and with a bitmap index scan on either side, you could have one worker work on one side, one worker on the other side, then the bitmap and could combine those, those two results to, to create the final bitmap. So there's a lot of interesting things that could be done here. Um, there's a couple of sort of things that you have to figure out. One of them is that the bitmaps that we use for bitmap index scans, like so many of our data structures, are not designed with the idea of a fixed size shared memory segment. 
Uh, and of course, parallel query does not use the main shared memory segment because there's no way we could size the main shared memory segment correctly for every possible parallel query at startup. But we do have to decide at the beginning of the query how large we're going to make the dynamic shared memory segment that's going to power that particular parallel query. And so that gets to be a problem with, with things like passing bit maps around. I am not saying that it is a problem we cannot solve. I'm just saying that there's more than no engineering that has to happen in, in order for us to get there. Okay, so uh, you don't need to outline the design that you have in mind right now. It might be great or it might be terrible, but we can talk about that at the time. Okay. Yeah. Right, so the, the max worker processes setting limits the total number of background workers in the database for all purposes. And that includes parallel workers as well as any other background workers that might be being used by other extensions that you have installed. That's a system-wide limit. So max parallel degree limits the number of workers that an individual gather node can launch. And max worker processes limits the total number of background workers that can exist in the system for any purpose at one time. Right. So there, there is definitely a possibility that things could go badly for you. Um, if you only have uh, eight, uh, process, eight worker processes available, which is the default setting, and you set max parallel degree to four, and then you kick off 20 parallel queries at the same time, the first couple are going to grab all the available workers, and the others aren't going to get any workers. And they're going to be running a plan that was chosen with the idea that workers would be available but they're not actually going to be able to get workers, so that might suck. So that's a DBA problem to figure that one out. So the question is about hints. Um, we do not have any query hints. Um, we do have one setting that might be useful uh, to some people, and that is we have a relation level option called parallel degree. Um, and if you set the relation level option, uh, then you can say when that table becomes the driving table for a parallel query, always use this number of workers. Uh, but that's a table level setting. And that's pretty much as much control over it as there is at this point. Um, I think, you know, obviously one reason why this feature is somewhat immature in certain areas is because this is the first version of it and it took three years to get that. Um, but another reason is that we don't necessarily know at this point what all the right things to do actually are. So one of the things that we need is feedback from people who actually try to use this feature on, well, gee, uh, I, I tried to use it on this query and this horrible thing happened and I didn't get the plan I wanted. You know, we, we have to get that sort of feedback so that we can see what the patterns are. I mean, I went and did this analysis on these TPCH queries, which have the advantage of being a set of queries that were not designed with this feature in mind. They're just queries that somebody thought were interesting, uh, and that person happened to be on a transaction processing council. Um, but, but obviously, the real world uh, use cases, the r real world cases in which this is going to use are going to be much broader than what exists in this benchmark. So, uh, you know, I have ideas based on what we've seen so far of which limitations are, are most important to lift and which things we're most likely to want to change. Um, but we also need to hear from people about their experience with it in order to sort of guide that in the best direction. Yeah. Yeah, if you overload the system, the system is overloaded. So maybe in the future, maybe having a server farm where there is a way you can have where you can combine an X number of processes for such parallel queries, then maybe uh, if you have enough stores available, then you parallelize. Otherwise, only within those dedicated yeah, I'm not sure I understand the precise idea that you're proposing for controlling this, but I do think that the kind of thing that you're talking about is something that uh, we'll very possibly want to look into at some point. Um, 
I've been mostly focused on trying to get it to work at all, which I'm happy to report that it mostly does. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I do want to just mention uh, who did the work uh, briefly before we wrap up. Um, so I, I wrote a lot of the core infrastructure, and I wrote the, the code to allow the joins to happen in parallel. Um, uh, Amit Capella uh, worked uh, on the parallel sequential scan part of it. Uh, Noah Mish uh, was at Enterprise DB when we first started doing this work, um, and he helped with a lot of the fundamental design ideas that became part of this. I, I think in terms of code, the only thing that ended up getting committed of his were some very detailed comments in, in a couple of places, uh, but his design ideas really informed the whole thing. Um, David Rowley did the work on parallel aggregate, uh, which uh, obviously makes this feature much, much more compelling than it would be without that. Um, um, that was you know, not, not an enormous portion of the total uh, work that we did on this, because this was a three-year project, but uh, he did really good work on this, and it really does make the, the feature a, a, a lot better. Um, uh, then Julian, whose last name I'm afraid to pronounce, uh, wrote the code for the parallel uh, degree rel option. Uh, Andres uh, reviewed uh, some of the code, definitely not all of the code, but some of the code. Um, and <laughs> and uh, Rushab and uh, Amit and Jeevan, who are my colleagues at Enterprise DB, also helped with, with small pieces of the infrastructure. And as far as I know, that's everybody who has done significant uh, code or review work uh, on, this, on this feature, and I apologize if I've forgotten somebody who should have been included. Um, so that's all I've got. I'm just about out of time, but I have time for like one or two questions, maybe from, yep. Yeah. So the, it was a 10 gigabyte input database. Um, I don't know if that's what you mean by the scale factor. 10 gigabyte, yeah. So the input files were 10 gigabytes. The actual database size on disk ended up being 22 gigs. Yeah. So uh, I apologize if this is a touchy question. I do not know about parallel storage and other database systems. How does this compare to, uh, so what other types of databases are you talking about? Uh, so the question is, how does this compare to the best parallel query system that's out there? It's probably significantly worse. We never had it before. It's the first version of the feature. It probably has bugs. Um, it, I've listed a long list of things that it doesn't support, so I think it's quite obvious that there's a lot more work to be done there. Um, and, and all I'm really going to say is, despite all of that, I think you can see from these benchmark results that there's enough here for this to be really useful to some people. And we will obviously, I will be working on uh, putting at least some of my time into making this better in future releases. And I really hope that other people in the Postgres community are going to come along and contribute to it as well. Um, one of Enterprise DB's motivations for doing this as an open source project was to enable other people to contribute to the work and, and help make this better. Uh, and we've already seen that happen with the parallel aggregate stuff. Um, and um, I'm hoping that, that other people are going to get um, involved in, you know, adding new kinds of executor support that we'll need to support certain things, lifting planner restrictions, um, and, and doing all the other things that need to be done in order to, to make this better. Um, I'm kind of an infrastructure guy. Building infrastructure is one of the things that I do best, so I write a lot of incredibly boring patches that just do very internal things that don't benefit people directly. Um, so I, I kind of... Uh, I, I kind of think of my uh, role in this project to be to get it off the ground and uh, get, some, get some air under it, and then I'm, I'm hoping other people are going to come in and, and help take it forward. I don't expect to completely stop working on it, but uh, uh, I hope to work on it a little bit less than I've worked on it over the last uh, year or two, because that was a lot. <laughs> okay, I think that's probably about all the time we have. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. I'm happy to take individual questions afterward if people want to come up. Thanks.